nothing about doing out there. Y'all excited? Yeah. I'm excited. We got a new year tomorrow. Yeah. 2018. A new year. God's got lots of good things for us in this coming up here. Amen. I heard the Spirit saying this morning when we were um, just there, last a little bit of a lull there, that the best is yet to come. I believe that. The best is yet to come. Praise God, I believe that. Well, you know the best is yet to come when we go to heaven. <laughs> but you know the promise that uh, thy latter days shall be greater than thy former days. Yeah, that promise is unto us. Yeah, we didn't uh, go through the trainings that we've gone through. Some of you have been through some mighty tough training periods. And uh, I think of Joseph and all that he went through. Um, you know, thrown into the... Betrayed by his own brethren. Yeah, some of you have been betrayed by your own brethren. But you know what? <laughs> if you want to move into that anointing that Joseph had, then that needs to go off and be like the water from the duck's back. Amen. Because Joseph, at the end of the story, when he was ruling of all of Egypt, he said, well, <clears throat> I said he meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. <laughs> that many people might be saved. <clears throat> you know, we need uh, to take the things that are coming at us and just let them roll right off. <laughs> yeah. Because it's training. You're training for reigning. And sometimes you, you go through trauma and traumatic things. But uh, even though the enemy didn't send it, or the, the Lord didn't send it, the enemy sent it, uh, the Lord's going to turn that thing around and use it for our good. That's right. Amen. Amen. So you've got, God's got mighty plans for you. You know, Jeremiah 29 11, such a good passage this time of year. And, uh, uh, it says. Uh, <clears throat> I know the thoughts that I have for you. The King James says thoughts. But now then the, uh, the in the Greek, or not the Greek, the Hebrew, and uh, also in some of the, several of the other translations, it says, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Uh, well, that tells me God's got to, God, he, he's got to figure it out. Say, brethren, Robbie, God's got plenty for you. And it says that it's uh, uh, to prosper you and not to harm you. See, so God is not a harming God. He's a prospering God. And He prospers us as we stick it out <laughs> and stay faithful. He prospers us in our soul. And in our body and in our mind. Do you ever read over there in Thessalonians 5.23 where it says uh, that, uh, our, that our whole spirit, soul, and body would be preserved blameless to the coming of the Lord. God is bringing us into realms to where our body, our soul, and our spirit are prospering. God wants you to prosper in your in your financial arena. He wants you to prosper in your body and He wants you to prosper in your emotions and in your mind. And uh, even if you have been traumatized in those areas, um, it's okay. Because God can take that. And whereas uh, in this situation with Joseph, it says that they meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. The enemy means to destroy you with things, but God means to exalt you with them. The very things that the enemy tries to destroy you with, God wants to exalt you with. Hallelujah. A stepping stone uh, to move up and higher and higher realms. The bitternesses that you've tasted, 
See, uh, when, the, when the children of Israel had a bitter, bitter time and they came to the waters of Mirabah, when they came to those bitter waters, the Lord told them to throw in the grain. Another, another situation similar to that, they told them to throw in the tree. Well, if we put, if we, if we put the cross in a situation, if you put the cross in the bitterness, it can turn sweet. And the waters of Europe will turn sweet. If you put the Word in it, which, see, the grain is the type of the Word, the seed. When we put the Word in a situation, when we put the cross in the situation, even though it's bitter, see, it's been bitter. You've had a bitter pill and several to swallow, brother. But God was speaking to me that your, your days uh, ahead are going to be uh, like the path of the dawn that grows brighter and brighter till the full day. See? The path of the righteous is like the light of dawn. It grows brighter and brighter till the full day. And so, the seasons that you're in, there's a seasons of, of shadows and then there's seasons of brightness. And God's going to bring you to those seasons of brightness. You just stay, stay steady during the seasons of shadows because brightness will come. That's what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to you. And, and you just stay steady. Good things are ahead. Good things are ahead. Bless the Lord. So, He has plans to prosper us and not to harm us. To give us a future and a hope. Uh, another translation says, an expected end. So it's, kind of, it's important that we expect something good from God. I like how Vicki Grant said this morning in her prayer, Lord, we're here expecting. We come here expecting. Well, I just wake up expecting. Amen. You know, it don't have to be at church, but if when you're at church, you are expecting. You know, remember in over there in uh, Acts, and there was the man at the gate, beautiful, who had been born crippled. Remember that story? And the Bible says that uh, Peter and John came. And they came to the temple there. And he was at the gate called Beautiful. And it says um, that they looked on him and he was expecting to receive something of them. Amen. Expecting to receive something of them. Well, of course, I think probably in the natural realm, you know, he's expecting that maybe they're going to give him some money. I don't know. But then, then again, they had heard the stories of how healings had occurred to Peter and John. So whether he was expecting for money or whether he was expecting for a miracle, I don't know which it was, but he had his expector on. <laughs> and you and I need to get... A, you see, some of you in here, the Spirit is saying to me, some of you are disillusioned. See? You're disillusioned and you've allowed the enemy to get into your thoughts and plant negative thoughts in there that it's just going to stay this way. Not going to get any better. I'm just going to have to learn to live with it. I'm just going to have to live my life and endure this until I finally die and go to heaven and I'll be so glad when that happens because I'm so tired of all this. That's right. And that's the way some of you are. But I'm going to tell you that's not faith. That is not faith. That is the enemy planting negativity into you. Be like the man at the be like the man at the gate, beautiful. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Said he was expected to receive something of them. And he came down there, you know, and and uh, uh, it said it said, uh, look on us. And he said, uh, you know, he asked him for an alms. He asked for, for some money. And, and he said, Now, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And the Bible says his, his ankle bones uh, received strength and he rose up. And he, well, it says he went into the temple jumping and leaping and praising God. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, what if he hadn't been expecting? 
begotten. What if he hadn't asked? He wouldn't have so he says he asked them. You know, he was asking. He was reaching out. Look at the three things that are in that. He asked. He was reaching out, and he was expecting. I want you to ask. I want you to reach out and I want you to expect God to do something in this next year better than what He did in the year before. Amen. You're going to have better results. Yes. Your children are going to come closer. We're going to have some more of these people getting saved like Mary did in our families. We're going to have financial situations come together, insurance situations come together, and housing situations come together. Amen. Hallelujah. Our health is going to get better. We're going to get stronger Amen. in Him. Well, I expect that. <coughs> Hallelujah. Expect it. Yes. You know what the Bible says? What sort of things you pray when you, uh, when you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them. Amen. And you shall have them. Yeah. Well, that's expecting. The <laughs> other version says, and it says in the Greek, uh, Mark 11, 23. Uh, uh, oh, turn to Mark 11, 23. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them. Now the New International Version, uh, uh, the New American Standard Version says, believe that you already have received it. And they will be yours. Believe that you already have received it and they'll be yours. What is that? It's expectation. See, God told us over there, in uh, Jeremiah 29, 11, he said that, that I might have an expected end. A hope. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. See, hope is not just flip a coin. That's not hope. Hope is expectation. I'm expecting. I'm waiting. I'm expecting something to happen. Hallelujah. Looking down the road. You remember the prodigal, the father of the prodigal son? The Bible says he was looking down the road. What was he looking for? His son to come home. Because he believed his son was coming home. And some of you need to get to believing that your son is coming home. Amen. That your daughter's coming home. Amen. That your lost loved ones are coming home. What is that? Look down the road. Begin to look down the road. What, what are you saying? I am saying begin to expect it. Amen. Expectancy is expecting to see. <laughs> Are you listening to me? Yes. This is not in my notes in any form or fashion. But I'm telling you, the Spirit is saying this. You've got to get out of that negative train of thought that the enemy has you in. Amen. And start believing God for bigger things. Amen. Believing God for better things. Amen. Hallelujah. He has, I know the thoughts, I know the plans that I have for you. I wish we had that. What's the Amplified say? I wonder. I don't have you can you put you know how to pull it up in the amplifier? Um, that's okay. Let's look at there we go. Oh well, that doesn't matter. It, so anyway, if, if you can't find it in there. <laughs> well, you know the amplify it amplifies it. So it, it, it means so much more. Hallelujah. That we expect. And then we believe, see, you've got to believe that so many of you are, have wrong thinking about God's character. <clears throat> Did you see, I, I have a, the, I, my thoughts and plans for you are to prosper you and not to harm you. God's not out to harm you. So many people think God's out to harm them. No, for I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Thoughts and plans for welfare and peace and not for evil to give you hope in your final Outcome. Amen. Mm. You know where, where where it says peace here. I think in the King James version it says. Um, <laughs> Prosper. All of those just happen to be the Hebrew word shalom. Say shalom. 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 You know what shalom means? Shalom. Mm, I like me some shalom. <laughs> shalom means. Peace of mind. Shalom means peace in your home. <coughs> Shalom means peace in your heart. Thank you. Shalom means peace in your uh, nation. 
Shalom means health. Physical health and healing. It means all of those things. Isn't that powerful? Well, you know what? God's going to prosper me. He's going to heal me. He's going to bring peace in my home. He's going to bring order out of chaos. Hallelujah. I, I call in the name of Jesus order and ever chaos. If there's chaos in your life, speak order into that. In the name of Jesus, I call divine order into that. Speak that. Call, don't ever call your children what they are. Well, you little brat. Listen, I'm telling you right now. That is sin. Just tell me right now. I'm, is it okay if I just admonish with you? Stop talking bad about your kids. Amen. The Bible says to call those things that be not as other world. Do you know in the Old Testament that Abraham and Isaac, all of these men that brought their children to them, it said that they laid their hands on them and pronounced a blessing on them. And he, they spoke over them the blessings of the Lord. Speak the blessings of the Lord over your children. I mean, if some of you will get a little bit of self-control with your mouth Amen. and stop cursing your children Amen. and speak a blessing over them, what they're going to be. In the name of Jesus. I'm telling you, I've got those verses memorized in my head. I can't get them out of there. That Isaiah 54, 13, all my children are taught of the Lord. Amen. And great is the peace and undisturbed composure. That's, that's what I'm claiming for my children. And the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. Thy children shall come back from the land whence they were and be restored. See, those are the kind of things you need to speak over your children. Those scriptures are out there on a piece of paper that I typed out for y'all. But you need to claim those over your children. They don't say they're, they're standing by that. Quit it. Come on. Did you know that Proverbs 18.21 Proverbs 18.21 says, Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And he that loveth it shall eat the fruit thereof. In other words, if you talk it, you're going to eat it. As Grandpa said, you make your bed, you're going to lay in it. You know? Well, you make your bed with your mouth. Hello? Amen. Get some control over this thing here. You're not children anymore. Amen. You're adults. Begin to speak blessing. I'm telling you, I've had people say the nastiest things to me in the last, oh, couple, three weeks. And uh, it didn't even bother me in the least. I, 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 I said, I, Nancy, I'm growing. I'm growing. Because I just blessed them. I said, God, just bless them. What are they? they don't know what they're doing. I'm, no, they don't know what they're doing. And I just bless, oh, and I just looked, I looked for the good in their heart. Just me and Pollyanna knows how to do that. So I look for the good in them, you know? Remember Pollyanna's locket? You know, he had the quote from Abraham Lincoln in there. It said, if you look for the bad in mankind, you'll surely find it. Well, I'm looking for the good in them. I'm looking for the good in you. Amen. 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 Now that doesn't mean we ignore the bad. <clears throat> we correct it when we need to. But in the correction, we have lots of love. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, we need to move over. And see, that's what the gift, I don't know what time it is, that's what the gift of prophecy is. The, the gift of prophecy uh, well, the, the definition for the gift of prophecy is this. If you're taking notes, and if not, I have, I have this little sheet that has all this on it. But uh, the, the definition of the gift of prophecy is a supernatural utterance in a known tongue. A supernatural utterance in a known tongue. And I add to that inspired utterance. Because the Bible word for inspire means God breathed. And when you're speaking under the inspiration of the Spirit, it's, it's, it's like God just breathed it into you. 
and you speak it forth. And, and, and it happens, see? And I've seen this happen so many times. Anytime God wanted to do something, He spoke it. Amen. And then He got His people speaking it. Old Abraham was, how old was he? He was old. Older than old Cootie's goat. I'll tell you how old he was. He was very old. <laughs> Older there. And, and God said, and now you're going to be a father of many nations. Now if you read over there in Romans 4, 17, or 16, 17, 18, right in there, it says <clears throat> that a father of many nations have I called thee. A father of many nations have I named thee. He didn't have kids. Hello? Many nations? I'm dried up old goat. Yeah. Oh, there it is. As it is written, have I made thee a father of many nations before whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things that be not as though they were. <clears throat> God called him a father of many nations, but he wasn't a father of many nations yet. So you're not lying when you speak your faith. Amen. If it's inspired by the Spirit, you're speaking forth under the inspiration of the Spirit what's going to be. And when you do that, you begin to say... It's just like last, remember how we paid the church off in, what, June last year, July? I don't remember what month it was. Well, earlier that year, the Spirit began to deal with me and I began to speak it out. That we were going to pay our building off early. Now, I was planning on paying it off in a couple years. But God just stepped in and paid it off six years early. Amen. <laughs> I was just believing for two years, but I began to speak what I was believing. Because he had put that in my heart. Now, you can't just do things if he don't put it in your heart. You just can't just, you know, we're not Christian scientists, right? We're not Christian scientists in mind over matter. Right. I don't believe in mind over matter. Word over matter. God's word over matter. Amen. That's where the power is, not just mind power. Right. Hallelujah. And so we began to speak that forth and speak that forth. And... Got you to speak in it. Well, we all spoke it and then God did it. Amen. But He spoke it to me first. Amen. Hallelujah. He even confirmed it through a minister, a friend of mine. <clears throat> he said, You're going to pay this building off by the end of the year. Had no idea it was going to be July or something like that. Who'd have thought? <laughs> Hallelujah. But the, the power of speaking. See, when God created the heavens and the earth, He spoke forth. And He said, light be, and light was. See? God told Abraham, you're a father of many nations. Well, pretty soon then Abraham began to believe it. He didn't believe it at first. But pretty soon he began to believe it. And he began. And any time God wants to do something, He speaks it. And then we can grab a hold of what He's speaking. And then when we speak it, something happens. Now, some word of faith people have this backwards. We don't just speak something, you know, just because we want a new Cadillac. God may not want you to have a stinking Cadillac. You don't, may not need one. You know what I'm saying? But if He puts something in your heart, then you begin to speak it by faith. And just uh, if it's written in His Word, if it's a promise of His Word, well, we're going to claim His promises. I've got as much sense as a Baptist. <laughs> Standing on the promises of Christ my King through eternal ages, let His praises for the Lord and the highest I will stand and shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises I cannot fail. Though the howling storms of doubt and fear assail, by the living Word of God I shall prevail. Standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises I cannot fall. Listening every moment to the Spirit's call. Resting in my Savior as my own law. Standing on the promises of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Standing. Standing. Standing on the promises of Christ my Savior. Standing. Standing on the promises of God. Hallelujah. There's power in those words. There's power in those promises. There's power in the living Word of God as it comes forth from you. 
It's just power there. So the gift of prophecy is one of the nine gifts of the Spirit. But basically, all the nine gifts of the Spirit are is listening to God and flowing with Him. That's all they are. Listening to God and flowing with God. That's what the nine gifts are. You can sum them all up in that. Listening. Oh, you know, you choked built the church. I don't know. Is it is it a million now? That, it, it was real close to a million. It's over a million in uh, uh, Seoul, Korea. Sin lives in God Church. And I remember him teaching us. He came to Rangel one time and taught us. And I think his church was only 500,000 or something like that time. <laughs> and uh, and they, 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 he said, people have asked me, what is the secret of your success, Dr. Cho? And he said, two things. I wish I could do the Chinese accent thing. Or <laughs> Korean or whatever. That we're, you know, I pray and I obey. I pray and I obey. What are you talking about? He's connected to God. You get that connection and then you do what the connection told you. Amen. Some of you are not doing what the connection told you. And that's why you're in the mess you're in. So this year, amen, let's make a commitment that this year we're going to do what we're told. We're going to submit to divine authority that God has for us. We're going to hear from heaven and we're going to do what he says and then it'll work. I was just thinking of Moses just now when I said that. You know, God spoke to Moses and uh, stretch your rod out over the, the waters and they parted. He said, this day you're going to see the salvation of your God. He stretched that rod out of the water. And they parted and they walked on the other side. He connected with God. God told him to do something. And he did what his part was. You've got to do what your part is. Everybody has something in their hand. Moses had the rod in his hand. He had that staff. And God told him to do a lot of things. He didn't. He just had him to use what he had. See? And God will just have you use what you have. Just do it. Do with what you have what God tells you to do. And then and more will happen. I was just talking to a, a dear friend of mine yesterday. And uh, he said that God just gave him a, a phenomenal... He said we, start, we started tithing different. We, we started doing our tithes different. We started being more faithful with our tithing. And he said, and the Lord opened the door this year for us to wipe out a whole bunch of debts that we had by purchasing something and flipping it and selling it or some kind of something. I don't remember what the whole detail was. But it just all, hallelujah. Well, well I didn't hear it. And I was trying to encourage this brother. I said, now brother, I said, now don't give, don't over give. Don't give too much. I don't want you to hurt your finances. Now just don't give too much. And he said, now brother, you can't out give God. And then he told me the story of what just happened this year. I said, well, you just keep giving that. <laughs> just keep giving. Keep giving. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Isn't it amazing? It is amazing what, what can happen through the through obedience. The proper prophecy. Prophecy is it just all flows together. All these gifts just flow together. I hate to oversimplify it, but it's basically what Paul Young used to show said. Uh, just listen to what God says to do and do it. Amen. Amen. What's, that's a relationship. You need a deeper relationship with Jesus. A deeper relationship with the Holy Ghost. That's, that's all what we all need. When we get that, everything else works. Amen. The Bible says in Matthew 6, uh, 6 33. I'm preaching, I guess, today. I don't know what's happening to me because I'm not sick with my notes. But anyway, Matthew 6 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Amen. And his righteousness. Yeah. In other words, don't take, don't worry about your own plans and your own household stuff. Worry about God's stuff first, and he'll take care of your stuff. Amen. I was told once if God can put, if you'll let God put his hand in your pocket that he'll let you 
put your hand in his heart. But if you won't, he won't either. Hello? That's why tithing is so important. Is why, why some of you are not getting any further in your financial situation than you, you need to start working on your tithing. Start working on your giving. Because when you do that, there's just something about putting God first. All these other things work out. Amen. I, I've just noticed through the years the people that are doing the best financially are the ones that are tithing, that are giving. And, uh, and so there's no big condemnation. I'm not speaking no curse over you. You know, you're not going to, you know, drop dead because you don't tithe or this or that or the other. But, but what you do need to do is begin to give. Your whole mindset needs to turn from me to thee. So, from me to thee. That's how our mindset has to turn. And when we do that, hallelujah. When we do that, we'll get a blessing. Went and saw the Blackwoods this year, uh, this last week. Called the minister. You remember uh, the Clark boy that came here, Jeff Clark? And uh, I shouldn't have mentioned that. But anyway, uh, he and I went to see the Blackwoods while we were in Branson this week. I called him and said, let's go to the Branson, uh, go to see the Blackwoods because Nancy's sick. I don't want to go by myself. So <laughs> he lives down there in Ozark, about 20 minutes from Branson. He came down. But, you know, I thought, man, I got, I've got this tithe from some money that I've got. And I thought, i got to get rid of this. So, uh, you know, I don't keep your tithe. Get rid of that tithe. Put it somewhere. Sow it somewhere. Amen. Listen to me. You want the blessing coming back. you got, so, you know, I, I, we were sitting there talking. I just stuffed that new shirt. And later he texted me, thank you, blah, blah, blah. And I didn't say that to get any glory because I don't care what y'all. I'm not worried about people, but I'm just telling that as an illustration. Get rid of your tithe. You know, God may tell you to, to take part of your tithing. And there's a minister over there, Cracker Barrel, and just slip it in his pocket. Mm. Well, then do it. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And if you get a real huge inheritance and he tells you to slip me a log, just put it right in here. Right there. <laughs> I, I tell you what's going to happen to me this year. This year, now I'm speaking this out. This year, I have about $30,000 worth of debt. And this year, it's going to be wiped out. I'm, uh, it's just what the Spirit's been putting out on my heart. I don't know how it's going to happen. I'm not even going to try to manipulate it into being. It's just going to happen. Amen. Hallelujah. You need to begin to speak some of those things over your finances, Amen. over your jobs, over your families, over your... Begin to speak a blessing yes. over yourself. Did you, did you ever read the verse before 24 that we said a minute ago of Mark 11? It says... Um, Whosoever shall, shall, shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things that he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Did you notice that most of the time uh, we say whatever we have instead of having what we say? Well, what it is, is we just we keep ourselves bound in what, what's going on. And instead of beginning to speak something different. Hallelujah. Well, this next year, things are changing for me. See? You hear me say that? I needed to say, last three, you know what I've told several people, I said, well, yeah, the last three years, I've gone in debt. I said, $10,000 the last three years. Yeah. And I've just been whining about that, kind of telling people, and and then I've helped some family, and then I griped about it. Did you ever help somebody and then gripe about it? Well, I did. I helped them, and then I griped about it. Hey, I just lost my reward. You know what I mean? Stop doing that. Don't give and then gripe about it. Are you listening to me? So I'm changing my whole mindset. I have plenty of money for whatever I need and to help other people. 
and I'm going to do that. And then this just this little piddly thirty thousand dollars ain't nothing. Amen. I mean, I have a house, right? Yeah. I owe thirty thousand on my house. Big blue TV. That's all I got. I don't have nothing else for it. A couple little bitty things in there. But then I was whining. I don't think God's pleased with that. Amen. I do not think God is pleased with that at all. Hallelujah. He wants us to begin to believe Him for bigger things and good things, gooder things. Yeah. Keeps getting gooder and gooder. gooder. Yeah, anyhow. Who <coughs> said that? Somebody on Gaithers. <laughs> Bless the Lord. You, you know, our thinking, sinking thinking, keeps us locked in. But the gift of prophecy, um, one of the rules of the gift of prophecy or the three purposes of the gift of prophecy, I guess I'm going to get into this a little bit, is edification, exhortation, and comfort. And that's 1 Corinthians 14, verse 3. Mm -hmm. But he that prophesies speaketh unto men unto edification and exhortation and comfort. I don't see nothing negative in that. Do you? Remember, do you all remember Brother Chuck Flynn, the prophet that came here and taught us for 15 sessions we had a big service here? Several years ago, he said that some people use the gift of prophecy to control other people. Well, that ain't God. That's just ridiculous. That's just manipulation. Somebody tried to do that in here, I'm going to kick your behind side. <coughs> I'm telling you. I've had prophets, supposed prophets, come in here and prophesy things, and I've had to set them down. And don't you. You think, oh, Pastor Ken is so sweet and, and he's so gentle. Yeah, but I'm telling you, when necessary, I can be very tough. And I will be. And if anybody comes in here trying to pollute you, I'm not going to let them. I will not allow it. Hallelujah. Edification, exhortation, and comfort. All those are positive aspects of the gift of prophecy. <laughs> Hallelujah. God wants us to, to flow in that vein and not in the negative. And so uh, Joel 2.28, it talks about in the last days, um, and then in Acts 2.17 and 18, the, the fulfillment of that is, Joel 2.28 says, and, and it shall come at the past afterwards that I will pray out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And then if you look over there in Acts uh, uh, 2.17, it shall come, it says almost the same word. It shall come to pass afterwards in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams. And upon my servants and upon my handmaidens, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. Amen. Now, I believe, I'm just telling you what I believe. I'm not right about everything, but right about a couple things. I may not be right about this, but I'm telling you what I believe. I believe because of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and I don't remember what verse it is, but it says you may all prophesy uh, one by one. I think it's 1431. You may all prophesy. I believe every spirit-filled Christian should operate in the gift of prophecy. <coughs> In some degree. And I think that you do, even sometimes when you don't know you are. Amen. I think you are. And you're, you're, you're doing it, but you don't even know you're doing it. Amen. But prophesying is speaking to edification, exhortation, and comfort. And then when you mix a little word of knowledge in it, it might, or a word of wisdom, it might tell you a little bit about the future, what's going to happen. Amen. My, my mother-in-law, uh, uh, she I don't know how long she's been dead now, I can't remember. Nancy knows every date of everything. How do women remember stuff? I'll never, she knows everybody's day. She knows all your kids' birthdays. I don't know how she does it. But my mother-in-law, Nancy, put her in the car and was taking her back to Euless, Texas. And they backed out of the driveway and we lived out here was it Wheeler Drive or Stack? I can't remember. I think we might have been on Stack that time. And uh, they backed out. And as they backed out, the Spirit of the Lord came to me and said, this is the last time you'll see her. 
And it was. Yep. Wow. There was nothing wrong with her. We could not figure out why she died. She just suddenly died. She just died. And I never got to see her again. Uh, I think the ashes I got to see. But I never got to see her again. <clears throat> but the Spirit knew, see? And uh, I had that happen many times in my life. Not about that necessarily type of thing, but it just the, the Lord will speak to you if you listen. And sometimes, you know, you'll see a, a picture of somebody's face. You'll wake up and somebody's face will be in your mind. Or you'll have had a dream about them. Well, now, don't take it for granted that you just had a dream. Get up and pray for that person. You don't know what you might be protecting them from. And just because you had a bad dream too about somebody, doesn't mean that that bad thing is going to happen. It might mean that your intercessory prayer is going to stop that from happening. Hallelujah. So hook in with the Holy Ghost and as that gift of prophecy that's on the inside of you. See, I believe it's on, I believe it's on the inside of every one of you that are baptized in the Holy Ghost. Because the, but the spirit, see, the spirit lives in us, and the gift of prophecy lives in the spirit. So that gift of prophecy is is in us. He's in there, and we just need to learn to hook up with him and flow with him. Hallelujah! And uh, as we do, we see mighty things happen. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, in Acts uh, 21 9, it talks about Philip's uh, four daughters that prophesied. Now, when uh, God, God is not gender conscious, let me say this to you. God is not gender conscious. He doesn't care if you're a woman or a man. It says that your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Amen. Amen. So there's a great misunderstanding about women speaking in churches <coughs> because of some things that Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14. But it is so obvious to an intelligent mind that God is not telling us that women can't speak. Because if he did, Philip's four daughters wouldn't be prophesying. <coughs> Hello? And, your son, and, and Joel wouldn't have prophesied 2,000 years before and then I heard on the day of Pentecost that your sons and daughters shall prophesy. And Anna wouldn't pick up baby Jesus and begin to prophesy over the, him in the temple. Even under the old covenant, the prophetess Huldah directed the nation and, the, and Deborah, the prophetess, directed the nations about concerning war and what they should do and not do. Did you know that? Did you know women can prophesy? Amen. Hallelujah. So your sons and daughters shall prophesy. <laughs> this means we're all, God's not gender conscious when it comes to the gifts of the Holy Ghost. I'll tell you this little story. I was, uh, we were living in uh, Warrington, Missouri. And uh, I was a uh, praise and worship director of four worship teams. And we led the youth and children there. And uh, we had a small salary back then. It was 19. 87. And uh, you all remember Pat Harrison came here, uh, Kenneth Hagin's daughter. Well, her husband, Buddy, was still alive then. And after the service, the pastor introduced him to me, and he prophesied. He grabbed me and started prophesying to me. He said, Thus says the Lord, you're going to go to Kansas and you're going to serve that church over there, and blah, 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 and all this stuff. He went on and prophesied all this. And, and so I, you know, hallelujah. I put that in the back shelf. I, nobody's directing me but the Holy Ghost. However, that can confirm to you what the Holy Ghost is saying. So, needless to say, uh, we, we had had an appointment to go to this church. Heston Inter Mennonite Fellowship. It was a Mennonite church in Heston, Kansas. And we went over there and we tried out for the position of assistant pastor and youth pastor and I did 20 things, I'm telling you. Worked with all the praise teams. We had four praise teams there and I worked with all of them, organized them. And uh, so we got there, we stayed for uh, eight days. We were in 16 people's houses to have lunch with them and dinner every day. We had lunch and dinner with somebody every day for 16 
or for 16 different meals. And the second service that I was at, I got to preach at. And I didn't mean to, but I got to preaching and then I got to prophesying. Mm -hmm. And I called out some things in the church that I didn't know was going on and some people ended up I began to prophesy some things about washing feet and some people that had been fussing and fighting went and got buckets of water and washed each other's feet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Long story short, the next day was Monday and they had voted on us in that church. And he came to me, he said, this is historical. Mm -hmm. He said, we have a 100% vote on you and Nancy. He said, are you going to come? And I said, I don't know. I'm going to have to pray about it. Well, prophet had prophesied to me, <laughs> you're going to go work in this church, right? And then, 100% uh, vote's pretty good. <laughs> well, what I didn't tell you was when we were still in Missouri, in Warrington, I prayed about it. I said, Lord, what is it about? Should we, or is this church for us or what are we supposed to do? And the Lord spoke a scripture to me from the book of Acts. And it says, come over to Macedonia and help us. This was a call that was given to the Apostle Paul. Come over to Macedonia and help us. Uh, start with the work there. And so that's the only word I had. The only word I personally had that wasn't given to me from a prophet. And so, <clears throat> uh, Sister Shirley, she's going on to be with the Lord now, pastor's wife. She come up to me. She says, well, now, are you going to come or not? And I said, well, surely, I don't know. I have to have a word from the Lord. She said, well, I'll tell you. And she goes to men and I went and put these little things on her head. She put this little thing on her head. And she said, well, I'm going to my prayer closet. And I'm going to come back with a word from the Lord for you. And I thought, well, we'll just see. I was being, I was dragging my feet. And I'll tell you partially why I was scared. That was a big church, and I hadn't had a whole lot of experience. And so it just made, it was a little nerve-wracking in a way. And so the mind gets in the way, you know. Lord, But the Lord had spoken to me. So she goes in there, and she comes out an hour later, takes a little doily hat off, lays it down. She says, I have the word for you from the Lord. I said, well, what is it? And she said, thus says the Lord, come over to Macedonia and help us. I had never told one living soul. I had never told one living soul that word. And out of all the scriptures in the Bible, you all probably didn't even know that was in there. I thought it was Macedonia. That's a nuts, honey. Macedonia's a nuts. It's Macedonia. <laughs> You see how you see how God you see how God weaves things together if you'll cooperate. And you see how the mind tries to keep you from we had our best minister in that wonderful uh, I mean that was that, that group of men and I people, we saw so many people baptized in the Holy Ghost and, and I became the campus pastor and went up there and ministered to the, at the at the college and we had we had twenty singles come to our, our youth group every Tuesday night and we had a uh, another 20 in our youth group and our praise teams all gelled and pulled together and we had just wonderful worship the church grew it was just amazing what happened there but but the gift of prophecy uh, worked in different ways it worked with brother buddy harrison just prophesying right out to me it worked with me giving getting a scripture see god can prophesy to you through the scripture and then through a word of knowledge of a little lady with a dolly on her head. <laughs> See? And even with a boat. God can work with a lot of things. And so the Holy Ghost wants you to seek His direction for this next year. Amen, amen. And the rest of your life. Amen. What direction you're going, what He's wanting you to do. And then he wants you to hook in with what he's saying about that. And then you start speaking those things out too. That's a form of prophecy. To speak the promises is a form of prophesying. Because you're speaking an inspired word that God said. And when you begin to do that, 
Hallelujah. It begins to knock loose some of the cobwebs of the doubt and unbelief out of your brain. Amen. And you begin to think right. And you think positive according to His Word. And then God can bring to pass what He wants to bring to pass. Right. Hallelujah. It's just like, bless the Lord, it's just like here our sister um, Vicky's uh, son is in jail. And uh, we prayed him in there. Hallelujah. God answered our prayers. Bless the Lord. And, and, and he told her yesterday, he said, he said, God brought me here. God brought me here to save my life. Amen. You remember me telling you three weeks ago, I said, we're going, we're, I'm praying him into jail and God's going to save his life. Yes. Yes. I said, because if we don't, he's going to die. Yes. And I'm so thankful. But he wants us all as a church to pray for him. Well, I believe God has good things for him. Yes. You know, I really do. Sometimes things look like, oh, that's so bad. Oh, how awful. It's so bad. No, God has a plan. Amen. Don't look at even things like that as, oh, this is so bad. No, 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 no. You look at the bigger picture and you look on down the road. God has a plan for that boy. He has a plan for all of the stuff that's going on in our lives to bring us to a future and uh, an expected hope. Hallelujah. To prosper us. Physically, mentally, socially, financially. Hallelujah. In every way, we're going to prosper in this next year. Let's stand together. Father, thank you for the gift of prophecy. Thank you for the spirit of prophecy. The anointing of the candlesticks. Hallelujah. The anointing of the flames of light. The candlestick of the Lord. That shows us the path where we can see. That word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path so I know where I'm going. Hallelujah. Shine that light on our path, Lord. Hallelujah. Shine the light in every dark place and in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Anoint every person in this room with the gift of prophecy for their prayer life, for their family, for their jobs, for their ministries. For everything that they did, let them be anointed. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Bless the Lord. Well, I feel like I'm going to be disobedient if I don't do something. And I don't want to be disobedient. So what I want to do is, I'm just going to anoint anybody that wants uh, just an anointing. I can't give you the gift. But the scripture does say, stir up the gift that is given to you by the laying on of my hands. Stir up the gift, Apostle Paul said, that was, it was given to you by the laying on of my hands. So I'm just going to anoint you and just lay my hand on you. I'm not going to spend a lot of time. I'm just going to lay my hand on you. And ask God to stir up the nine gifts of the Spirit in you. Stir up the nine gifts of the Spirit in you, and including the gift of prophecy, because we're talking about that today. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, anoint your servants with the nine gifts of the Spirit. Cause a new receptivity to be upon them. <laughs> a new receptivity to be upon them. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, make our services. Make our services better. Where people will... Uh, Hallelujah, where people will prophesy in church and speak words of encouragement to each other during the week. Hallelujah. Lord, loose the gift of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit in these, your servants, Lord. Come this way, I have to be away from that speaker. In Jesus' name, anoint. Anoint. Anoint us for this new year, Lord. Anoint us for this new year with a, a, a sense of your direction and a sense of your understanding and a sense of your plans and purposes for us. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, anoint us, anoint us, anoint us, anoint us, Lord, with the nine gifts of the Spirit. Anoint us. Handa rabba shaka rabba diskiata kora Anoint us with the nine gifts of the Spirit, fresh fire, Lord, fresh fire in Jesus' mighty name, fresh fire of the Spirit of the living God. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Lord, bless our new 
This is a Lord of anoint her in Jesus' name. Do you know Jesus? Are you born again? Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you. I'm so glad. Thank you, Jesus. Father, anoint my sister. Anoint my brother with a fresh fire. Uh, you're anointed, Father, in the nine gifts of the Spirit, Lord. Let a spirit of understanding and seeing and knowing. Let the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge and understanding be unto us, Lord. The sevenfold wisdom, the sevenfold anointing of the Spirit of God, of the candlestick, spirit of wisdom and understanding and counsel and might, and the spirit of the fear of the Lord be unto us. In Jesus' name, everybody say, I hear Amen. and I obey. I pray and I obey. In Jesus' name. God bless you. God bless you. I love y'all. We're going to have a good year. Amen. We're going to have a good year. Go and be blessed. We don't want that.